In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. I'm Deacon Dick Peterson, one of the four deacons here at St. Tim's, and I have been called upon to preach at this Mass tonight. Now, those of you who have come looking forward to one of Father Shea's inspiring homilies, all I can tell you is Father Shea went to confession right before Christmas time. Now, I don't know what happened there, but I'm told that the priest that he went to said, Father Shea, for your penance, you have to listen to Deacon Dick preach. <laughs> so that's where we are tonight. Now, we've just celebrated Christmas three days ago, and today we come together to celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family, focusing on the life of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Now, of course, the Holy Family is kind of unique, if you think about it. I mean, one of them is God, one of them never sinned, and the other one's a saint. Uh, that's quite a different makeup from most of our families, I would guess. I'm sure you've heard it emphasized and said on Holy Family Sundays in the past that we're here to speak and think about and pray about the Holy Family. This is the Feast of the Holy Family, not the perfect family. As families, we may not be able to achieve perfection, but we can be called to holiness. So what does it mean to be holy? I, I thought you had never ask. Something is holy when it is set apart, when it is directed to the will of God. As simple as that. When we are asking and allowing the grace of God to work in our lives, we are being holy. So you see, although we may not be perfect, we can all be holy by asking for and following the grace of God in our lives. Now, when God came into the world, he could have come in any one of a number of ways, but he decided to come as a member of a family, obedient to his earthly parents and yet totally committed to the will of his heavenly Father. Now, today, the concept of family is kind of interesting. I mean, we have the so-called normal nuclear family with a mom and dad and kids, and we have a blended family, we have an extended family, we have a single person family, we have a single parent family, etc. Each one of these families has its own dynamic, and each one has its own challenges, sufferings, and graces. When we reflect on the first reading today, the book of Sirach, the relationship of children that children ought to have with their parents was made pretty clear. We are told that human life is best lived when children honor and respect their parents, as imperfect as we parents can be. Now that being said, I think it's reasonable to wonder how those children with really difficult parents, defective parents, can honor and respect them. Anyone who has grown up with an alcoholic parent a parent who is a drug addict, or a parent who is in involved in a life of crime, will know how difficult it is to maintain and honor and respect those parents. And we understand that. But with the help of the grace of God and prayer, it can be done. Sirach also mentions the need, difficult though it may be, for maintaining honor and respect to our older parents whose mental faculties are failing. And as I age, I can understand and appreciate that. In the letter to the Colossians, St. Paul teaches us about the virtues that we all need to live lives Christ together. All of us, whether parents or children, need to develop heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. What a different world we live in when we strive to live with these qualities in our lives. Finally, St. Paul describes the relationship between wives and husbands. Now, many homilies today might just skip over that and not try to address that at all. 
Because with the, the saying of St. Paul, we have to deal with women's rights. And, how, and we have to recognize the, the properness of these rights, the effect that these have with the relationship between wives and husbands. As St. Paul says to the wives, to be subordinate to your husband as is proper in the Lord. That could upset some people, but you know, just let me say, anyone who has seriously tried to serve any kind of a community, to serve any kind of a community, whether it's a family community, a religious community, a military community, or whatever, you know that service is about subordination to others. And service is also about the love of others. Families need both the gifts of the mother and father to serve in an organized and a constructive manner. The gospel also speaks of the vulnerability that comes with being a member of a human family. Where Matthew says, Herod is going to search for the child in order to destroy him. St. Joseph hears this, and he immediately understands that he has the unspeakable role of protecting God. His readiness to do so to, speaks to every father about our role as protectors and to our whole society about the need we have for good fathers, faithful fathers, Christian fathers. For decades now, the United States children living with a single parent have been rising. Marriages have been declining. Births outside of marriage have been increasing. A new Pew Research Center study of 130 countries and territories looked at these three parameters. Which country do you think had the worst, has the worst record when it comes to these three parameters, single parents, families, declining marriages, and children outside of marriage. Which country would you guess has the worst record? Think about it. It's your United States of America. Yes, the United States of America in this survey has the highest rates of children living with single parents, et cetera. This secular study found that the U.S. children, whether Christian or from religiously unaffiliated families, are equally likely to live in a single family arrangement. There's no difference between a religious-based family and a secular family. The study also showed that children who grow up with only one biological parent, and it's nearly always the mother, are disadvantaged across the broad array of outcomes. Twice as many of these kids will drop out of high school. Two and a half times these girls will become pregnant outside of marriage. 1.4% of those will become idle, meaning they'll be out of work or out of school, compared to children who grow up with both a mother and a father. Page four is sticky. <laughs> the study also shows that children in single parent families have lower grade point averages in school, have lower college aspirations, and have poor school attendance. As adults, they have higher rates of divorce. These patterns persist after adjustments with race, parents' education, resident locations, and everything. So what does this tell you? What does this tell me? What this tells me is that men of today are cowards. Cowards who are not carrying out their own weight, who are not doing what they're properly exposed to do. It's one thing to become a biological father. Even animals can do that. But to be a committed Christian father is where we are failing as family. So men, I think it's time for we to, us to get off our collective duffs and do something about this. The church, your church, 
Your Church of St. Timothy's is here to help you to develop a spiritual, prayerful life. As men, you can be or become committed Christian fathers. The Men of Iron Ministry here has regular support sessions that are very, very good and an awesome annual men's retreat. Father Charlie just led the last one. The Diocese of Phoenix also has an awesome men's retreat that's coming up in February. And there are several other specific ministry programs here at St. Tim's that meet regularly to promote men's ministry needs. Next month, for instance, our Culture of Life Ministry will have three presentation lectures that I challenge you to consider attending. The first will be on January 6th, where Becky Green will discuss, discuss the rise of suicide in today's world, especially teen suicide, euthanasia, and assisted suicide. On January 13th, Father Shea will discuss what it really means to be pro-life. And on January 27th, John David Long Garcia will discuss young Hispanics and the pro-life movement. Come and join us. Also watch the bulletin for additional ministries that can help you grow in your faith in life. To be a true Christian father takes work and prayer. To be a true Catholic Christian father takes work and prayer. And that's what we are called to do. Strong families are an integral part of the culture of life of our nation. And it is precisely the breakdown of the family structure that increases the temptation to abortion, increases the temptation to resort to euthanasia, and increases the temptation to administer a lack of proper care to our aging population. On the other hand, the communion of the persons one mother and one father that comes from giving oneself away to others in selflessness, selfless love, is what creates the proper context of saying generous yes to life. An age-old adage states that the word family really means forget about me, I love you. Men, it's time to make the commitment to be real men of faith truly committed fathers and sons of God. You can do this. So just do it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>